Hey guys, Simon from ARB Sherman. And one of the great things about being in sales for over 20 years is the people you get to meet and the stories they tell. I find it fascinating to sit down with a customer and go through all the places they've been, the things they've done and the things they've seen. So we wanna bring some of those stories to you. So we're gonna grab a group of customers, head up the bush, do some four wheel driving and let them tell you their story. So sit back, relax, stay tuned while we bring you ARV Shepparton's Four Wheel Driving with Friends. Hey guys, Simon from ARB Shepherd and welcome back to another episode of ARB Shepherd's Four Wheel Driving with Friends. Today, we've got one of our very own, Mr. Daniel Axelby. How are you, mate? I'm fantastic, Simon. How about yourself? Very well, thank you. Let's go. So, Daniel, tell us a little bit about where you grew up. So, I was born and bred in Shepparton. I, um, uh, from there, I went to St. George's Road Primary School. Then, in 2010, I graduated from Maguire College. So, you graduated from Maguire College, and then what did you do after that? So, after that, I um, started an electrical apprenticeship at Bonnet. So, I was there for four years. I did my time. And then after that, I didn't really like it, so I moved on. And then I was lucky enough to get a job at ARV Shepherd, and here I am now, six years later. Lucky enough, mate. Lucky enough to work with me and Jed. How good is that, eh? <laughs> How good is that? So, four wheel driving for you, where did it all begin? Um, it started pretty much in 1992 when I was born, pretty much. So, I was really scared I was conceived in a four wheel drive, and then nine months later, I was pretty much born in the four wheel drive as well, in my old man's Hilux. And, and then probably two or three months old, I went on my first camper trip and I've been hooked ever since. I can't get enough of it. Can't get enough. Okay, so your four-wheel drive, what was your first four-wheel drive you, you ever had? So when I was 14, I uh, b bought a stock standard GQ Patrol wagon with a 4.2 carbon petrol in it. I literally had it at home for two days and me and my old man started chopping into an extra cab ute. And that we took probably about 12 months by the time we got that built. We um, chopped into a ute put suspension in it, put lockers in it, change the diff gears, put a winch, just all the normal stuff that you do to one of these fine things, to be honest with you. So you chopped it, mate. You just, you, you've had it for two days and what, you took an angle grinder to it? Yeah, pretty much as simple as that, to be honest with you. Yeah, we measured it up for a day and then we, we put the first chop in. Took a fair bit of guts to chop that, your first car, wouldn't it? Yeah, it did take a lot of guts, but once we started, it was fine. It all just kind of rolled in from there. How old were you when you did that? Oh, so? I would have been lucky to have been 14, I reckon, the first time we, when we 14. started. 14? 14, yeah. Okay, and so how long did you have that car for? About three years. About a couple of months after I turned 18, I accidentally put on its lid. And yeah, that was all she wrote. Put it upside down, mate. Put it upside down, Miss Jane, That would have yeah. been fun. Okay, yeah, so what, what did you go to then? What was your next car after that? Um, I'm pretty confident after that I bought my first TD wagon, which would have been, I think, a silver wagon back then, or maybe even blue and silver, I can't remember. But a few of them, it's hard to keep up. So another wagon? Another wagon, a patrol yes. wagon, so you love your patrols? Actually, that's a mistake. I actually bought a GQ ute after that. I bought a single cab ute, is what I did. Okay, what did you do to that? Really nothing, because I had all the stuff left over from the old car put on the lid. So re literally all I did was just change cabs and got a re-engineered and registered and off I went again. All right, so you're 28, yep. I think. Yep. How many four-wheel drives have you had? Um, I think I'm up to about number six or seven now, I reckon. Six or seven? Yeah, yeah. Geez, that's a few, isn't it? Yeah, and they're all been GQs. How good's that? Loves your patrols. Yeah. 
Okay, so as far as four-wheel driving is concerned, you've done some competition stuff. What, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so many, many years ago, we, um, we got into the four-wheel drive competition scene. We actually start, we went to a first couple and we spectated them, which I think was an Outback Challenge, might have been the first one we ever did. And then from there, we kind of got into the marshalling scene. So we actually run our own stages and that type of thing and helped out the competitions. And it kind of just evolved from there. And a fair few, few years later, I was lucky enough to hop in with my mates and race my first competition, which was the Outback Challenge, which was a really, really good eye opener. It was good fun. Then from there, we went on to do the cliffhanger and that was unreal. It was one of the best times I ever had. So what would you say is the best competition you've been? Um, cliffhanger by far. It's the most hard and brutal one I've ever been on. Like, it's, it's unreal. The stage is long, the creek beds are awesome, the rocks are awesome. It's just some grouse fun. So for those people who don't know what the cliffhanger is and what, what's involved, can you tell us what would be involved in, a, in one of the stages? Or? There's a, a lot of different stages at cliffhanger. So it's based in a station in the middle of New South Wales, just out of a town called Coba. And there's a, like a big broad of different things. So the main or I think for the stage would be GPS points. So a lot of the time they give you a sheet before you start the stage. You hop on the, in the car, hop on the GPS, you put in all these waypoints and then you pretty much just go from waypoint to waypoint to waypoint and then it's just a mixture of speed, sand beds, winch walls, rock walls, just a bit of everything. And it's all obviously time under the clock. And then, yeah, obviously the fastest and cleanest time wins at the end of the day. You've been driving in those or passenger? Nah, just passenger. I'm a, not lucky enough to drive one yet, maybe one day when I get a bit older and have a bit more money, but we'll get there. Okay, so the goal, for as far as competition for wheel driving, you've still got ambitions to to do some your, yourself, like build your own truck and... Yeah, 100%, I'll thrive off it, to be honest with you. It's uh, the feeling you get when you're out in the racetrack and the 3 two, one goes, it's just it's something different. Like, it's unreal. You can't describe how good the feeling is once you're in race mode. It's completely different to be out wheeling with your friends. Like, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, okay. So, love your competition. So, what do you do, like, full driving on a weekend for instance like what do you what do you just do there I, I love it all to be honest i just like being out in the bush so i'll do anything from going out with my mates doing the extreme full driving to going up the high country doing the touring go to cape york doing the touring i love me fishing so going out going fishing all that type of thing i just i love being at the bush like it's my favorite place to be awesome so we've, we've been lucky enough to do a a few uh full drive days with some customers and that do you enjoy actually teaching and showing people how to do it and what to do. Yeah, I actually love that. Like, it, it's really good going out with beginners because you forget what it's like. It's a few years ago since I was a beginner. So it's really good to get in, help them, teach them skills. And sometimes at the end of the day, they can't thank it. It makes you feel really good. Like, it, it's good to teach other people what I love doing the most. So I get yeah, a lot okay. out of it. Cool. And you obviously work for us now. It's been nearly six years. Yeah, so six years in May. Yep. Um, so do you, what do you enjoy about the actual side of obviously you get to work with four-wheel drives all day but you, you're talking to people and customers who don't really know some people know a lot about it other people don't yeah it's so. really good it, yeah that's that's the kind of the good thing about work because yeah if people are coming up from scratch they've got all these questions they're going to throw at you and you just you just got to think on the spot and it's really good to teach people like who don't know much and you just I just go back to my life experiences with it all and just tell them what I've done how I've gone about it and everything like that so yeah no it's really really good so the big question then would be what's your boss like no he's a good bike he's all right he's all right Simon <laughs> <laughs> so Daniel you mentioned you've been up like the Cape and stuff like that tell us some and um, some of the trips you've been on so I was actually lucky enough as a kid with my um, parents. So every second year we did like a big destination in Australia for a minimum four to six weeks every second year. So I've, like I've been to the Kimberleys, that's probably my all time favorite. It's the best place I've ever been to. I've, I've done the Simps in Yatanami. I did Cape York a couple of years ago on this bad boy just here, which was a bit of an adventure. Um, I've done a lot of it, to be honest with you. I've done the East Coast, I've done some of the West Coast, like your Perth, all that type of thing. Been in the Arnhem Land, which Arnhem Land is unreal. If you get ever lucky enough to go there, please go. It's awesome. Your Kakadu National Park, that's I've been there for a couple of times. Like I'm slowly getting around the map. I just one day I need to get out and go do the whole lot at once. What's your all-time favourite that you've been on so far? Kimberley's by far. Kimberley's. By far Kimberley's, yep. 
What's the, uh, how old were you when you did the Kimberleys? I would have been 12 or 13 when I did the Kimberleys. Yeah, okay. So yeah. tell us a, uh, a story or an adventure from the Kimberleys, mate. So. I, I don't really have like a, a standout story. My favourite thing about the Kimberleys was all the swimming we got to do. There's, there's beautiful like swimming holes everywhere, big rock ledges and stuff. So you just climb up 10, 15 minutes up these rock ledges and just jump into these bottomless pools. Like it's just grouse fun. I love swimming too. Like, so that's what I loved about it the most. And the scenery out there is just next to none. Like it's unreal. It's okay. absolutely awesome. So you did the Cape a couple of years ago. Yep. Um, you took five weeks, five weeks off, six weeks off. Six so weeks. Six yeah. weeks off. Six weeks. So you went out the Cape. Now you're not known to um, hold back when you four wheel drive. What's um, <laughs> we did see some footage of you doing some pretty hairy stuff. What was the best part about that? Um, dropping in gunshot by far. It was a little bit nerve wracking to start off with, but once you, you started committing to it, it was it was grouse fun. I didn't get to drive it, which I was a bit shattered about. I did have to winch out of it, but that's part of it. I drowned my car a couple of times up there as well, but that's all part of the fun, I suppose. Yeah, I don't really like holding back. I did say I'm going up there to do all the hard spots, and that's exactly what I've done. Cape was good. Kimberley's was good. Yep. Where to next, mate? What's the next big adventure for you? I'd love to go probably Fraser Island next. It'll be my first trip with my family, because I didn't have a family back then. Now I do, so i probably start off small, go to Fraser. And then Fraser, I'll be definitely going back to the Kimberley's next. I reckon I'll take six weeks or so, and I'll go do that again. I'm not sure if I want to give you six weeks off, mate. Ah, so you'll be right. it's um, you'll be right. all right. So what's the um, what's the mode of transport then, mate? What are you what are you going to take up there? What's the next build you've got? Um, hopefully by next summer, I am planning to upgrade finally from a GQ to a GU. I'll do an engine swap and that type of thing, and to put me 4.2 into it, make it a bit comfy with the family. Have some aircon finally and a heater that works properly, and just it's just nice creature comforts that I've never really had in a four wheel drive before, to be honest with you. Okay, so we've got this bad boy here behind us. Yep. When did you get that and um, what's, it, what's it all about, this one? What's it all about? Well, I think I went through a stage where I killed me last, the engine in my last car and I was stupid enough to let the rego run out. And one of my mates just happened to have this up for sale and bought a GU, so I jumped on that pretty quickly. We'd done a bit of a deal and it was already registered, so I'd put my engine in it once again, got it engineered. Got it all up and going, and now here we are. I think I've had it on the road for three years now. I think it's my longest running four wheel drive I've ever had, to be honest with you. The longest running? Yeah, the longest running, I reckon, yeah. That's where we get. We're 28 and we've had six cars already, so. Yeah. But, uh, so, w what are we running? We're running a 4.2 yeah, turbo a, diesel in this one? Yeah, spot on, perfect, yep. Yeah. Yeah, nothing too special, just a bigger pump, bigger turbo, top man intercooler. She's, she got pokes along the right. And she's been drowned a couple of times. She's been drowned a couple of times. She's come back on the back of a tow truck a couple of times. She's um she's been through hull and back, but she always gets me there. Not always home, but she always gets me there. Very good. We'll skip back to work a little bit. Um, what's your favourite part about the actual four-wheel drive industry, like being working in it? So, um, I think just because four-wheel driving is my background and it's me, I just love talking about it. Like the best thing about four-wheel drive, like not forward driving, but my work is you get to hear other people's stories, what they've done, where they're going, how they've gone about it. Like it, it's really good. It gives you good ideas. You can throw ideas back at each other, and it, just, just getting the history of customers. Like some customers are up for a chat, and it's really good. They like telling you all about what they've done. It's really good to hear what people have done and how they've done it differently and that type of thing. It's I really enjoy it to be honest. Another one of my favourite things at work would be when a customer comes in with a brand new whatever and they, they're open to ideas and they just want to deck it out to suit what they're doing. It's, it's really good fun to be honest. You, you, if you want, if they want it, you throw the works at it and you do whatever they want to do. Like it's, it's really cool. Some people love spending a bit of money and some people don't. So you just got to get their feel and just yeah, get them to do what they want to do and try push a couple of things along the way. It's pretty satisfying when someone comes in with a, a brand new car look, as a blank canvas. Your ideas, their ideas, you combine them together and then you see the end build. Yeah, you make their dream car at the end of the day. It's a really good feeling. And then they, most of them, when they're good customers, they, they come back after their first trip and they tell you this, they tell you that. And it's a really good feeling, like you've been a part of their dream build at the end of the day. It's, it's unreal. It's really good, actually. So, Daniel, you've um, you mentioned that you're pretty much born in a four-wheel drive. You've been doing it ever since you were sort of two or three months old. Yep. Did you ever join a club or...? Yeah, so I was born in, basically born into the Golden Valley Four Wheel Drive Club. My man, my old man, was the president for a fair few years, so I've just kind of tagged along with him my whole life. We 
there's some good times at the old GB four wheel drive club. We um we used to run a competition a long, long time ago called the Bowo Bounce, which used to be up here in the Strathbogies before Shell got locked down and we couldn't do that type of thing. We used to have um, members from all over Victoria from different four wheel drive clubs, clubs come and meet up. And we used to, on the Friday night, we used to do a night drive. On the Saturday, we used to um, just go out and do some day drives, like all levels from sightseeing, easy, medium, hard to extreme. And then on the Sunday, we used to uh, run a quarry event. So we were lucky enough on the property that we had, we had a, a quarry on there. So we used to build this track out there and everyone used to go to town in the quarry. It was, it was a good old time. And then that got the, got the ban a long time ago now when the, uh, the bush got shut down. So you, um you, you do a few trips on those four-wheel drives. You do snow trips and stuff of the part of because you've got to be a part of a club to actually do snow trips, really, don't you? Uh, in certain areas, to go up to the top of Mount Skeen in the middle of the winter, you definitely you have to be a part of a four-wheel drive club to get a permit to go up there. Without it, you're not allowed up there. Obviously, in the summer, you're allowed to go over it. It is a main road, just over winter, it's shut. So that is another a perk about being in a four-wheel drive club. And it's also somewhere really good to start, too. Like, if you, if you don't know much and you want to learn stuff, come and see us, go to your local four-wheel drive club and they cater for everyone, so they are, they are really good help. Daniel, it's, um, thanks for coming along for a drive with us and getting a bit of footage and having a chat. No worries at all, Simon. Thanks for having me, mate. Thank you, mate. Good job. There you go, guys, another episode. And remember, ARB Shepparton, 180 Benalla Road. We'll see, see you there. there. Uh, I don't know, 2010? 2010? <laughs> <laughs> um, Do we look at the camera or just look wherever I want to look? It's like natural. Yeah. Might have just started from there. I thought you were a fucking one black man. What's wrong? Did I do something wrong? Oh, dang it, you're not bad, bro. You're not bad. <laughs> I wanted to throw that one with Jed too, so, alright, <laughs> you can cut that one out, <laughs> put that one in there.